guys, this is Mark. This is Mark. I was probably already recording and I probably said it twice. I'm going to show you how to get your white balance right on every time, um, close to every time, with this one little trick tip that I learned years ago. Um, so I've exposed this image the way that I want to and I'm ready to white balance it. So I'm in Lightroom. I'm going to press W to get my um, eyedropper tool over here. You can press this button to get that as well and it gets the eyedropper tool. Now, when I'm, uh, um, what it's telling me to do if you see Lightroom is saying pick a neutral target and a lot of photographers don't really know what a neutral target is because you're, uh, or at least what I used to do when I first started out was I would just eyeball it. I would say, oh, that looks neutral looks fine and that actually is a neutral target um, but you know maybe this one uh, that's still neutral you know maybe all these are very neutral actually um, and I'm yeah uh, so I did a good job with white balance but so like this one for example it may look neutral it looks very muted um, but the way that I know it's not balanced uh, this specific area of the image is that um, Red, green, and blue are not um, within the same kind of degree of one another. So there are 250 colors um, or uh, amounts of colors, um, uh, units of colors. And and in this case, the Lightroom is using it as a percentage. Um, so what's, what's happening is it's saying there is 35% red, 35% green, and 32% percent blue. We want those numbers to be as close together as possible when we're picking a neutral target. So I already know that um, that's not the balanced uh, neutral target that I want. I know that I already went over a couple. So this is a really nice neutral target because um, there's only, it looks like there's only like a 5% difference in all three of them. So you can see that red is 35.7% of that Green is 36.2% and blue is 36%. That is a nice balanced color that I would be fine with balancing this image off of. Now, the only issue is when I click it, you're going to see my color slightly change. And that, that actually looks looks fine, and I might adjust a little bit, but that looks good. But So the, the way that I just did that is not always the best way to do it because you have to be careful. Why? Because there are other colors being reflected and sent to other parts of the image. Um, especially if you're using um, uh, off-camera lights and things like that. I don't use that. I use natural light, so I don't have that problem generally. You know, usually this type of technique works for me. And then um, I will actually just copy that white balance to other shots and similarly framed in similar areas to save time. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can see how the red, green, blue is not balanced on his shirt, probably not balanced on her shirt, no. Um, you know, obviously not the skin. Sometimes hair actually is white balanced, um, but in in this case, it looks like there's so that one. It's kind of hers is not so much. Um, but anyways, that is how you white balance an image and get those tones. So here's my before. I'm sorry, that is not before. Um, let me go back. Yeah. So there's my um, white balance before, and here's my white balance after. And you can see their skins and all the tones just look a little more normal. And that's what I'm going for, you know. Um, we were in the middle of the day, so that this looks like the way that it was. You know, here we have a little more green. Um, here, their skin looks a little bit more human. So that's what I'm going for, and that's what sets me up to make a beautiful image. So um, that's how you do white balance. I do this before all of my images. And again, um, after I do this, um, I actually just will, uh, sometimes, depending on how many images are in the sequence, I'll actually just copy the white balance, like so, and then I'll just paste that white balance onto um, other images in the same series. Okay? Have an amazing day. This is Mark. Thanks, guys.